Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. We're back. It's 12 after the hour. Thank you very much. Stay with me. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Jim Blassingame, and you're listening to the Small Business Advocate Show, and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad Ted Fisherman's here, too, ladies and gentlemen. Ted Fisherman's one of the smartest guys I know, and uh, you heard me talking about him in the previous segment where I reminded you that uh, he's a former trader on the on the CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. He's a very smart guy. He's a journalist. He's uh, the author of, of two of my favorite books. One, China, Inc. You, I know you guys hear me talking about it all the time, even when Ted's not here. And uh, and then his new book is called Shaka Gray, about the aging of America. Well, Ted, I, I knew he'd been to Indonesia re- recently, but I did not know he he used to live there. And so he's here to give us a report on Indonesia. Folks, it's fascinating. Don't don't go away. You're going to like this. Ted Fishman, welcome back to the show. Hey, great to be with you, Jim. Good to have you back. Ted, I knew you'd been there, but I didn't know you used to live there and that you actually speak the language. So you kind of became a mole, right? I mean, I mean, other than the fact that you look like you're... You, you're from Minnesota. Uh, uh, you, uh, you, 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 you're, you know, you speak the language. You kind of infiltrated, didn't you? Yeah, I can hear people talking about me on the bus. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, when you ride in the bus, do you ride in the back with the hibachis and the livestock? Oh yeah, that's uh, you know, if I'm not with the goats, I'm not with my folks. <laughs> hey Ted, um, here's what I think. Anybody who's paid attention at all, who can find anybody who can find Indonesia on the map knows that it's a multi, multi, multi-island uh, state, and and millions of people. It's 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 prim- predominantly uh, uh, Islamic, and it's a democracy, and it's and it's it's an area that that a lot of people have hope for in terms of not only the Pacific Rim, but uh, but in in terms of 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 an of an, an Islamic democracy. And now, uh, so okay, that's 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 about all I know about uh, Indonesia. Tell us what else we need to know. Well, you know, what always shocks me, Jim, is how little uh, Americans know about Indonesia. I, I, I kind of like to think about it as the world's biggest invisible thing. Huh. You know, there it is in a huge corner of the globe. It stretches 3,000 miles from tip to tip, as wide as the United States. Right. Uh, it's how many islands? It's about 17,000 islands. Thousands. Uh, about half of those are, a little less than half of those are occupied, but a few of them are really inhabited, like Java, which is just the size of my home state, Illinois, and it's got more than 22 times the population of Illinois. It's got wow. 150 million people wow. in Java. And um, it's the most densely populated area on the earth. The country itself is the fourth largest country in the world, about 240 million people just after China, India, and the U.S. So on all these islands, they're about 75-80% the size of population of the United States. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spread out over all these. How do you, you know, can you imagine, I mean, think about it. President Obama's got to be thinking, my goodness, I, I can't hold together these contigu- contiguous states, these 48 contiguous states. How does he, how, how does anybody manage all those places, all those islands? How do you, how do you stump in those places? <laughs> well, it, it, an election there is like a military campaign. They have to send helicopters <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. They've got to get the ballots back to Jakarta. Uh, people in Indonesia in their homes, they speak about twice the m- number of languages that Americans speak in our homes, yeah. more than 300 languages. Um, and but the beautiful is, part of what you just said was election. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the biggest direct elections in the planet. How did they pull that off? How did they turn that kind of, uh, those, that culture, those multiple cultures, those multiple languages, multiple societies, basically, how did they turn that into a democracy? Well, they had a long experiment with the opposite of democracy. They had a totalitarian regime. Uh, the president who fell in 1998, Suharto, had been in uh, more than 30 years. He was the world's longest-running ruler after Castro, and people were just sick of it. Um, it, it didn't work. It was uh, corrupt to the core. Mm-hmm. All power was concentrated in the center. 
Um, and then, interestingly enough, a kind of theology grew out of Indonesia's uh, Islamic traditions, which was uh, that uh, Islamic law demanded that democracy be the form of government for Indonesia. It's 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 an unusual kind of uh, theological. So religion. democracy basically rose out of theology. In it's, part, they found a way to make it comfortable. Yeah, but uh, but it, but it, but yet it's not. But yet it's not. Uh, it's not really a theological democracy, is it? It absolutely is not. It's multicultural, yeah. multi-religious. Um, religion is not. Uh, a state religion there. There are. You know, we need to export some of that over to to, uh, to uh, Libya and Egypt and and and, uh, and Iran, don't we? They're trying. Um, some of the terrible events in Libya coincided with a period when I was traveling with the president of Indonesia, President Yuta Yono, mm -hmm. and he woke up early in the morning uh, to greet his ministers. I was in on the meeting. Hmm. Uh, after being up all night watching CNN about uh, what was going to happen in Libya, and he said, look, uh, here we are in the largest Muslim-majority country in the world. There's more Muslims in Indonesia than there are in all of the Middle East put together. That's mm -hmm. something most people don't know. And he said, we have an example. Um, we had a dictator. He moved aside in order to make room for democracy. Mm -hmm. He saved our country enormous bloodshed. Um, you know, maybe we can be a beacon to the world. I didn't know that you and you and you and the Prez are like buds over there. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> well, uh, we're not friends, but I did get the first exclusive, you know, in-depth time with him of any. Wow! Ever, see, folks, see how see him. how cool our brain trust members are. Uh, Ted, what's the future of Indonesia? The uh, future of Indonesia is mostly promising. I would say it's got some huge problems, which we'll talk about, but. Its economy now is growing at uh, just about the greatest clip it has in a generation. Uh, it's the third fastest growing economy in the world. It's a big economy. After India and China. Yep. It's the largest economy in Southeast Asia, bigger than all the other Southeast Asian economies mm -hmm. put together. Um, they've got natural resources. They've got human resources. Um, they are getting record amounts of foreign direct investment and portfolio investment. When Europe looks like a bad place to invest your foreign invested money and right. maybe the U.S. is growing too slow for you, uh, Indonesia looks very, very good to a lot of institutional investors around the world. Mm -hmm. Very uh, interesting. So they're finally but, getting money. But the president that you spent some time with is about to have to leave office, isn't he? He's, he's halfway through his second... Uh, five-year term, and he's only allowed two terms. Okay, so, so we got a couple of more years of a good guy, and who, and we'll, and we'll come back after these messages. Two things: we're going to find out what a little bit more about the future of Indonesia, and why you, and why you should care, small business owners, and also why is Indonesia the anti-China? Ted wants to tell us about that. Twenty after, I'm Jim Blasingame. Ted Fishman is our guest. His new book is called Shock of Gray. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience. Except as otherwise provided by copyright law, all other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved.